Hey, what's up, Tamalusa? My name is Patrice. I am the Vice President of Black Student Union. And a fun fact about me is that I am a resident assistant at the dorms on campus. Hi. And here I have with me. Uh, my name is Demarcus Floyd. I'm the President of Black Student Union. A fun fact of me, I'll say I was in the choir, you know, I, I like to sing. Um, presenting our guests, Hello, Texas A&M San Antonio. Uh, my name is Jart Brown. Um, I have the pleasure of serving as the co-advisor for the Black Student Union along with Dr. Reba Sims. On campus, I um, serve as the Assistant Director of Student Life, um, formerly Student Involvement, um, under the uh, Cincinnati Institute. Um, in addition to that, I also coordinate our Minority Males program on campus, which is the Achievement Initiative for Minority Males. So any minority males um, who want to get involved and want a brotherhood, please come find me in CAB 103. And on that note, we would like to open up to our first culture podcast with DEI. Yeah. So, now that we've gotten the introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Black Student Union. In you guys' words, what do you think that it is that what we do? Um, so, from my perspective, what BSU do is put on events that are educational, fun, and in a way, a community and like engagement type of events that brings black students and other students to our org and just find out what we do around campus and just build like a family type of thing. Definitely. What about you, Jared? Um, I agree with what the market is saying. Also, I think for um, BSU is very special for this campus population. Uh, with this being a Hispanic serving institution, um, sometimes other identity groups can be placed, not placed on the back burner, but overlooked. So uh, organizations like the Black Student Union or like Asian Student Association, they have that community where they can be around people who look like them, who sound like them, who talks like them, who, and just make it a very comfortable environment. So I think for me, BSU is just that place here on campus where all of our black and African-American students can come together um, despite of what campus we are on and build that community and bond um, as you guys matriculate throughout your college years. Definitely. And piggybacking off of what you said, this is a HSI. And so I think with that, it's important to learn the different cultures on campus. So not only um, do we, you know, have our own understanding of how we were brought up and our culture and our traditions, things like that. I think it's also important to tap into the different cultures like the Asian Student Association or maybe um, different clubs on campus. But yeah, I definitely agree with you. But we definitely got some events coming up. So be looking out for that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. And then our next question will be, what does Black History Month mean to you? Mm. So for me, I don't consider February just being Black History Month. Black history is American history. You can't talk about the United States without talking about what a black person did to help build this country to what it is today. So for me, yes, they gave us the month of February, which is the shortest month of the year. But for me, black, black history is American history. So that's mean it's 365 days of the year and 366 days of the year on a unique year. Definitely, I think that a lot of things that are not seen as good or positive in the public eye is kind of looked over. And I think it's so amazing that so many people are working to change that. The public absolutely needs to know what's going on, um, what's going on behind TVs, what's behind closed doors, mm -hmm. behind uh, business offices and stuff like that. But what do you think, Demarcus? When when you say what Black History Month means to me, I feel like it's a month where we go back to see what happened in the past, but also 
cherish what we accomplished within whatever we, not whatever, but what we've been through and stuff of that nature. Just, it's a recollection, but also a celebration type of thing. Definitely. I agree with that. I do. Um, Black History Month, I mean, in a sense, it is a great month. It's a, it's a month where all eyes is on Black and African Americans. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a month where people decide, you know, let me learn about um, W.E.D. Du Bois or Hill Harper or somebody recent like Viola Davis who is have made black history of now winning an EGOT. Um, for those who don't know what an EGOT is, she has won an Emmy Award, a Tony Award, a Grammy, and an Oscar. Ooh, um, wow. so, black excellence. So it is black excellence like that. So I love that with the Grammys being um, in the month of February, we now have Beyonce Knowles. Carter is her last name, right? What mm -hmm. Jay-Z last Carter. name? Carter. Mm -hmm. Carter. Yeah. Carter. 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 Yeah. Carter. Carter. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm a Rihanna fan. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not a Rihanna or Beyonce fan, but it doesn't matter. Um, but she won um, four Grammys, I believe, which made her the most um, the most artist with the most Grammys it's ever, history. which is a black person. So I think for me, Black History Month is a month for us to really come together, celebrate the rich history of everything that a black or African American person is doing to build this country and just to highlight our success around the world. Definitely, definitely. I love it too. Black History Month, um, a lot of people say, um, it's, a, it's funny, it's a conspiracy because it's the shortest month of the year. <laughs> Conspiracy. Well, there's a lot of conspiracies <laughs> out there. It is, Very but much so. we're going to keep it pushing. So the next question is going to be, what can others do to celebrate Black History Month, mm. especially those who are not of Black descent? Right. I think it just comes to the conversation, I, talking and yes. getting to know what you can do or really how can you, as not being a part of that culture, really help celebrate that? There are different ways. Um, it also talks about this learning about the different history facts and the, and the, the people who has contributed to our history, to American history, um, to talk about the tragedies mm -hmm. of that we have um, went through, like the murder of George Floyd, like Emmett Till, and realizing how those things that have happened, Emmett Till happened, um, years and years ago, George Floyd just happened about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the things that we are still fighting for back in the day, we still fighting for it today. So how can others celebrate black history? It's first is talk about one, talking to somebody who identifies as black, understanding what does black history really mean. It's not that we're just gonna wear the colors black, red, yellow, and green during the month or host a soul food dinner. Let's talk about how can I, if I'm not a part of the culture, how can I as a be an ally to the black culture? Um, how can I go out and learn and push the narrative that, again, black history is American history. I think how others can also celebrate is just be aware of your, your you know, just be aware of your biasness and um, what you don't know. Again, I think once you start having conversations with people, um, I think that that will start opening your eyes like, okay, let me see how we can do this. Let me see how I can bring some of the black culture to our campus or to whatever you might do and help expose that to people. Um, one thing I will say is shout out to SGA DEI commission that's led by Faye. Um, when she put on the AAPI culture night that opened my eyes because there was some of those dances I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. There is food I have never tasted before. And it really gave me a sense of pride that, oh wow, like this this is what, what it means to be a part of your heritage, your culture, and you are sharing that with me. So how can we share that with our, with people all over our campus and throughout? Uh, I definitely agree with you. And I have noticed on campus the trend of people who are not of black descent saying that they are afraid to join the black student union or any other cultural uh, organization on campus because they aren't that or they can't identify as that and i have to explain to them that as long as you respect 
our boundaries and you abide by, you know, different things that you guys set into place, then there shouldn't be an issue. And if there's no disrespect involved, why would it be, you know, why would it be awkward or right. anxious for you? I love, I personally love um, sharing my culture with different cultures, with the people of different cultures as well. So I feel like it's just like a, a learning aspect. So they want, they need to have the need to learn something within a different culture. So say for me, uh, I'm in a part of Asian Student Association, right? I love the Asian culture. I love what they do, what they watch, what they eat, all that. So I'm willing to learn more within that and how they roll and you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. So I think it's just a, a learning aspect from people. If they're willing to learn and really want to know, then we're more than welcome to teach you and bring you in with us so we have a better communication about things and nothing gets like conflict per se. So with that being said, have those conversations, ask those questions, talk to your friends, join that club. Facts. For sure. Please join BSU. It is open to all. Although we focus on the black culture, um, it is open to all d demographics and race and ethnicities. Um, and then and for our African students, you know, it is open to you guys as well. I know that is a little sim uh, a, a tricky conversation within, you know, being black and being actually from Africa, but we embrace it all because we know we, we need that community here on campus to um, as you guys um, participate into uh, uh, participate through your college career. Um, okay, um, definitely. And piggybacking off of the Afri African student population and then students who are traditionally American. That divide, what have you noticed um, it, regarding upbringing and character and traditions, that aspect? The way we were raised, how is it different? Or similar, similar or different? A black parent and an African parent is strict. That's one thing Very that you much got. So. If, if dumb street lights come on, you, you better be at the crib. Better, <laughs> be the you better be at the crib. If you go into the store, don't touch nothing, Not don't ask anything. for nothing, because mm -hmm. you got food at home. Absolutely. Like, so um, I think. Oh, no, you can't spend the night. I, I was going to say, if you act out, you're going to get that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of things that. Uh, um, Cross overseas and um, what's the word I'm trying to use? Um, similar and similar then, characters between the yeah. black um, culture and the African culture. I do think um, so. I was had an opportunity to attend my first um, African Nigerian traditional wedding. Um, it was beautiful. Just the way they did their ceremonies, just the food that they ate, how the wedding was ran, um, just the custom. It was it's felt so nice to be around people who really truly embrace our culture. Well, not our culture, their culture. Right. I think for us living in America, uh, we have our certain black culture. We have the things that if a black person from Washington say or do, somebody from Florida, Boston, Hawaii will understand the yes, reference because that it just passed on through the black community. And I think that's the same way with African, um, the African hair culture as well. We are very rich in tradition. Mm -hmm. um, we are very rich in tradition. Um, but there are some things that, you know, Africans, um, what their family does and believe that, you know, it's not always what somebody who was born here in America kind of believe. Um, but I think that's something we just embrace as people and learn the different cultures. Don't automatically assume that black and African American is the same. Um, black, this is my, this is just me. So I'm not, I'm not a professor or anything like that. A scholar, I'm just, just having a conversation. Like for me, black is, I'm black. I was born in America. My family was born in America. This is what I know. For me, when I say African American, I think of somebody whose family or mom and dad is from Africa, and they probably have moved to America, and they oh now are an African American. 
takes the temple if somebody from the Asian heritage or culture moved to America, they will be known as an Asian American. So for me, I think it's, again, I could be wrong. So any professors, you know, I would love to have conversation because I might be ignorant of the, of, the, of the issue. But for me, I think um, it is the difference and we need to learn how to separate um, black and African-American. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I agree as well. Um, I feel like that there has always been that like kind of separation in the black and African-American community just because there are lines that aren't clearly drawn. There's things that um, maybe the black population may understand and the African-American population won't. At the end of the day, it just comes down to being able to have those conversations. And if we are all anxious and shy and timid, that'll never get done and everybody will continue to stay divided. That's the biggest issue, division. Um, all this division is, it can be combated, it can be you know, it can be, it can dissolve. It, it just takes someone or a group or people to make the first step. Well, let's continue right on. So another question that we have, a little more personal, what are some individual goals that you guys have? Hmm. Say most of my goals are to not trying to put too much stress on my life, I'm trying to like figure out ways that I can keep my mind and heart at a calm state um getting more in touch with god and having that connection because i've lost it many of the times um and i'm trying to just keep rebuilding that and keeping it strong and stuff of that nature um when it comes to uh work uh, i would say <clears throat> get my get myself really ready for this life <laughs> Really, I mean, I believe I'm ready. I have a plan, but like, it's really just executing. Cause sometimes I have hard times executing a plan when I have it already set, you know what I'm saying? So that's some of my goals. I felt everything that you just said in my spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, this, this year is definitely gonna be a year of healing for me. Um, healing from things that I never allow myself to heal from. So that's one of the biggest things that I am trying to stop doing, um, pushing off my emotions or invalidating myself. So I'm working on that within myself. Um, also, eating three meals a day, because sometimes I don't like to eat breakfast or Girl, lunch I or dinner. Girl, I be skipping. It just happens. It's I ain't college. Gonna lie. It's college. You know, I like. I'll be forgetting. When I wasn't in college. I ate all my meals, but I'm in college and now I would rather sleep than eat. I'm so sorry. I work, I do homework and work till all hours of the night. And then your <laughs> friends get on you, be like, hey, bro, you gotta eat. I'm like, dog, I'm sorry. I just be I get to it. <laughs> I get to it. Just, you know what I'm saying? Let me finish this real quick and then, and then bow. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we need, we definitely need to stop doing that because I do the same thing. Jock, you did the same thing too? No. <laughs> Um, in my younger days, I did sleep. Younger days, he's thirty years sleep. old. Yeah. Um, I am, I am thirty now. I have reached into a new decade. Yes, sir. And and I feel the the thirty grown man. Uh, I've been grown. I'm just getting here. Oh, but um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no. On serious note, um, I think it's all about um growth. Um, as a college student, you should always you're gonna sleep in, you're gonna goof off, you're gonna do X, Y, Z. Um, I think for me, I was the same way. But as I has got more into my profession and my career, um, and as I got older, um, I, I have picked up new new traits. So for me, I'm if I'm not out and about doing, you know, having fun, you know. Um, I'm in the bed by 10 30. Mm. Like, I, I value my sleep. That's one thing that, you know, we Respectful. as not just black people, just in general, you need to value self care. So I value my sleep. Um, also, I, I, I wake up about 5 30, 5 45 every morning. That's just because there's so much thing you can do 
you can do in the morning time to really start your day. Um, so I do, I like your goals about eating three times a day. That's one thing um, that I'm also trying to work on, you know, working with my, um, my doctor, my nutritionist and stuff. That's one thing they said, you need to eat three times a day. It's very important. I'm so busy. I don't think about eating three times a day, exactly. but that's something that you have to force yourself to do. Yeah. Um, if that's downloading an app, if that's setting reminders in your phone, if that making sure you're actually packing a lunch so you don't have to worry about going to make or find something, it's there. Um, but I support you, and I think that, you know, we're going to do this together. Um, we're going to do this together, you know. So we have nothing to worry about. But I, I really do like the goals uh, of, of that. Um, and then for you, Demarcus, you know, if you want to get back, get back in the church, you know, I am a preacher kid. I, I Me grew, too. You know, shout out to the preacher kids. Yeah. And uh, for those who say we are the kid, worst but... ones, we are not the worst ones. We are we really the best ones. Y'all just yeah. don't understand our struggles that we have. Really the best ones. You know, you, you didn't have to sit in church services from Sunday to Sunday. I had five. to, basically. <laughs> I was forced to get to what the church. What y'all know about that 6 a.m. to 3 p.m.? <laughs> I had no choice but to go to the church well, because of my good. pops. But what I was going to say is... Uh, you are welcome to come with me to church. I go to church every Sunday, 9 a.m., New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church off of 14. I love to have you. Ooh, you're um, going to have to take me one day. I will. And, you know, um, I, 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 for me, that's something that I value is self-care and getting, making sure that I make time for God. Um, I'm very religious. I'm very religious. Um, there's some things, you know, that, you know, as humans, there are things you like you, but did he really mean it that way? You know, you want to combat what it's saying. And that's what you just, you know, you read your Bible, you go to church and you just have those conversations. I will say that, you know, in the black community, church is really not an option, especially growing up. That's something that gets ingrained in you Very as true. a kid. And when you get into college, that's when they be like, oh, I can make my own decisions. You lack all for I'm going to sleep in, that. like Patrice said, or I'm not going to go to church and do it. Which is your prerogative. Nobody can tell you your relationship with the man upstairs between you, besides you and the man upstairs. But I will always recommend you to go to the church house and just give you a new feeling definitely new i feeling. can watch the online is all i want but it just it's not the same yeah covid really ruined that with that online i mean some churches had online service mm -hmm. before covid but it's nothing like waking up going into a building with people who believe what you believe in and just praising the word of god and let's talk about that let's talk about how a lot of people have been traumatized by church not having that option as children and their parents not prioritizing how they felt or what they were going through um, in those times a lot of people have kind of tied um, being like terrible human beings and being religious as one and I really that really hurts my heart because I am someone who believes in God and I'm going to worship him and I'm going to make time for him and I'm not going to feel bad about that. But the, mis the misconceptions and then not being able to explain them or explain them and not people not believe you or not wanting to hear you, it's so hard. But something that I'm going through <laughs> every day in college. Just pray about what it. What about you? Just Marcus? pray about it. Um, when it comes to that, um, my perspective is I'm not trying to let that in, like, affect my mindset of, you know what I'm saying, my view of God, I guess you could say. Because people can have different perspectives and feelings. Okay, cool. I'm sorry that you feel this way. Sorry. But this is what I believe in, stuff of that nature. And I'm going to respect it. I mean, I can talk to you, and we can have a conversation and both view our, I guess, point of views, but I'm not going to let that affect me in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So, Def I mean, <laughs> if uh, more people were like you, I think that it would be a lot easier for people to attend church or even give 
um, their religion a chance. But because that's consistent not only in Christianity but in lots of religions, a lot of people are just completely – they have complete, I guess, disdain for religion in general. When in general there's just – bad people in every group there's going to be there's going to be bad bad church people or bad black people or black bad white people or bad everybody so i don't think that it's fair to put a whole category under a negative i guess perspective right. so who are y'all's favorite musical artists john legend off rip like that okay <laughs> Mm. Hey, he's a okay. he got as well. Hold on, hold on. We gotta split it up in categories, or that's just... what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm so sorry, John Legend. Uh-oh. In every category? <laughs> no, 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 not every category. I was about to say, like, well, hold on now. Like, they, John I Legend mean, is okay, a goat, but who's like, your, who's on. your all-time favorite? All time. All time. I gotta go say J Cole. J Cole, John Legend, Beyonce. So sorry. Yeah. She do have the most Grammys. <laughs> she she do. got, she do. but she got the most Grammys. You're so petty for what? <laughs> I still but, feel like Jay Cole. Okay, let's break it down. Me. I ain't gonna lie. Let's break it down then. Old school R and B. Who? Old school. Ooh. Mm. Whitney. Whitney. But and what? Once what again, in what Whitney category? Whitney can go R and B, but Whitney can also go pop. Exactly. Ooh. You feel like me? There's different levels to this right here. Okay. It's not right, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. That's okay. the R&B side. That's my, <laughs> okay. You know, that's that's my, the body that's my section. Mm-hmm. The, the you body know, guard. after she came out of her um, pop era and she settled down into her tone and she really experimented with sounds, that Whitney. So question. So question before we go to your other question. Okay. Do you think that if Whitney was still alive, mm-hmm. that Beyonce would be who she is right now? Oh. <laughs> um, or I if think, Mariah Carey would have been who she I is right now. I think that Beyonce would be. I think that they would be greater because they would have more. They would have more film to digest. They would have more style to try to, I guess, mimic. I'm I'm a singer myself, so for me personally, I try I, I try to listen to the peop- the artists that I like best, and I find. Uh, consistencies or different tones or different ad-libs that they do with their voice consistently amongst the same genre and that helps me to um, I guess form my own sound and I do have my own sound so if you catch me and you want to hear me sing you know know, I love that I love that I might sing to you (laughs) because you know that's something that we do have it bad in the black community it being crabs in a bucket you know when somebody is succeeding or just being great at something, you always want to find something to bring them back down. Yeah. Like but haters. I, but haters, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely But I a love lot how you said that you feel that Whitney would have made Beyonce greater. And I, and I do that because it She's shouldn't very be genuine who song. should be, who's better than what, is how can I take what I'm doing to help you better in what you are doing? Definitely. How can I help improve your craft? I like that, you know? Hopefully, hopefully we will make that change in the future. You know, our generation, we're rooting for us. <laughs> the older generation is definitely not. <laughs> our generation. Whew. You see? You see what we're saying? That's they crazy. just sigh. <laughs> but your overall, you said J. Cole. I say J. Cole. Okay, that was my that J. Was Cole my be old talking about R&B. Stuff, boy. Old school R&B. Mm. Old school, once again, what genre? I can just pick I said old school, school R&B. R&B. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> old school R&B. Ew. Mm. Off rip, my mind went to Kevin, uh, Tevin Campbell. Okay. Off Kevin. rip. Can he, you talk uh, <laughs> for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. Can you talk? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but, what y'all know about Kevin Campbell? So, to most of you don't know who Tevin Campbell is, please go YouTube him. His one of his greatest songs is "Can You Talk." Woo, yes, boy, yes. it gets you, it gets you right. Y'all yeah. already know Whitney, and if you don't, come talk to me. Whitney got a movie. She do got a movie out. Just came out around in the December, early January. I want to dance with somebody. 
Ooh. I want to be with somebody. Um, yeah. <laughs> we take music very seriously. Very, very, very much so. Very, very seriously. Very. <laughs> um, so you said Tevin? You Tevin said Tevin. Okay. Tevin Come on, Jari. Come on, Jari. Old school R. Uh, you know thinking who else? very hard. Robert Glasper. You know that's that was controversy over the Grammys because he yes, got to, that's the guy. I okay, was talking look, about. look, look, because my best he, friend no, texted no, 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 no. me. He won over Chris Brown. Who was that? Come on now, let's be real. Who Chris Brown that? is gonna overtake that dude. Oh yeah, my cousin should have won. His last name Brown, my name Brown. The Browns oh, always me. succeed. But who was the person? Who I'm going to have to disagree. Just because he wrote the songs. What? No, Robert. Okay, look, Robert Glasper. You have to go listen to his music. Who He's, are these people? You've never heard Robert Glasper. Have you ever exactly. heard? Exactly. Why did he win? Nobody knows him. Nobody knows him. He is him. very talented. Are we allowed to play I, music? I'm not <laughs> saying he ain't talented, but I'm saying over overall, you know, Chris Brown got more hits and more records and than Robert Glass, whatever his name is. So your perspective is give the people what they want. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I feel like he deserves a lot. I truly do. Mm -hmm. He deserves a lot for what, it, what, for what he created and put out to the world. And he's definitely getting the recognition that he's deserved a long time ago. Okay, you can't dwell on the past though. You're like okay. okay, no, 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 no. He put out a he put out a video. I don't, I saw it on Instagram or something. He basically said, if we're gonna judge people of what they did in the past, so you can say R. Kelly, uh, mm. Michael Jackson, you know the situations. Okay. But if you're gonna judge them off that, they should have won none of it, nothing. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? What I'm saying, what I'm saying regarding Robert Glasper is he, that he's Who still making. Can you, <laughs> yeah. sorry? He look, he's still making music. His good, his newer music is giving just like his old music was giving. So when I said that the flowers that he should have got a long time ago, mm -hmm. I wasn't referring to his old music. He's still making music, and it's very much a bop. <laughs> so um, I think producing or actually singing. He. It, Okay, look, he okay. He is a producer, uh -huh. but so like a DJ Khaled type of producer. He sings as well, so no. Mm. Have you ever heard the song "Everybody Love"? Sing mm. it. Uh, everybody love. Everybody love. Love. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Yo, whoa. You never heard that song? No, not at all. Okay, moral of the story, he is a great artist, and I think that people should give him a chance. Imagine no one taking you seriously, and then you finally get the spotlight or the recognition that you've been wanting for years, and everybody is saying, no, it should have been somebody else. Oh, my God, well, no, it should have been. This? But you can say the same thing about Chris Brown. Well, uh, no. At, like, at all. You can't say that. Chris what Brown's kind of good. Album? He's, he's, he just had one. What? Did he just have a latest album? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, Breezy, right? Mm, Was that his latest I don't album? Know. When that came out? Uh, last year? Either last Let's year or... Uh, I don't know. It's definitely last year, 2022. Um, but going to... I don't really have a favorite old school R&B because for me... That's what what they had the groups. They had the True Hills, the oh, Joe, the, the, the Fugees. What's it called the Fugees? Dang it, the Fugees. The Fugees. The Fugees. I don't think that's R and B. That's not R and B. Come on. Yes, yeah, Breezy. Sorry, I looked it up for y'all. Is it? I never, it's yeah. Breezy, yeah. Oh, breezy with the words too. in the back of his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Breezy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um. You said I understand. Though. I guess yeah, I understand. Old R and B had the group. New edition. New edition. Ooh. Can we get it? Stay in the rain. Let's get into TLC. TLC, they hard too. Evo. Jay. Bat. Uh, Black Shriek. <laughs> oh, I want to say Bat Shriek Boys. What was the song? Black Shriek. What was the song where he said, uh, uh, um, I gotta let, I gotta make the girl a friend before I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess wife her up or make her our girlfriend. You know that song? Hold on, now I gotta mm -hmm. go through my playlist. Keep talking. 
yeah, I don't know. We can talk about either. But um, so you think that Chris Brown should have performed as well? I don't watch award shows. I just I just hear the 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 buzz after the fact. Gotcha. Um, but I was excited for my girl Viola Davis though. Me guy. too. That's 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 big. A lot of people got their flowers this year. Very much. And so. you got Whitney Goldberg. You got Jennifer Hudson. I got Viola Davis. Like I will say, Bad Bunny went crazy on the Grammys though. I saw a video. I didn't watch it live, but he went dumb. Bad Bunny. What I'm a do? Dominican. I'm Dominican and black, so like, you know what I'm saying? I, I Dominicano. Black, I, Dominicano, I never, you know what I'm saying? I work so. at Texas A&M University in San Antonio, Texas. I would not say anything bad about Bad Bunny. If I would Very <laughs> much so. You <laughs> should not say it. Not a dang word bad. That's why. They will get on you. They will get on you for real. <laughs> in the quickest fashion. You nearly chop for them. Mm, all right, all right, I found them. Shy. Bad Bunny, baby. Shy. That, you know that song? Mm. Uh, if I have ever fall in love. You know, I know a lot of songs. I don't know the names of them, so. Me too. But it's okay. I'm about to play it. I don't know if I can, though. That's why I was asking if we could play music. No? I don't know. It's okay. Da-da-do, da-da-do. Ooh, da da Time that I saw your brown eyes. Your hand said hello, and I said hi. You don't know song? What? You don't know song? It's okay, because the market is not being on the fair voice and They take so it out of the satisfaction. To my satisfaction. Okay, I can't sing that. But <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I really want a lot of my God. I gave you more than I mm. can give. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't know who Sade is? Oh, you better get your black card revoked, too. <laughs> Bye. You don't know who Sade is? You don't know who Sade is. Uh, oh. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I just got put onto it like last semester, um, so that's why I'm. T- who? Jahi? <laughs> nah, it was Maribel. She. she Shout put- out to my cow. Maribel workers. put me on onto that song. I go. Okay, cab office is lit. <laughs> they, got, they got a good supervisor. I didn't think Maribel knew that song, but she put me on. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, let's jump back into it. Um, what are your thoughts on the current political issues affecting African Americans and Black Americans in this country? Mm. When you got somebody like a governor of Florida who wants to take out um, African American studies, when you got somebody, I would say that um, that's a deep topic. I definitely agree. Take your time. Take your time. Usa. You know, this is a very deep question, and if you know me, you get I get kind of emotional when we talk about these type of things, um, especially you know, the summer, 2020. I think that that summer would never leave my brain. Um, seeing a black man killed um, on camera in front of every witnesses, just yelling, I want my mom. Um, I think that sometimes our government, they use that for a political, I don't want to say stunt, but I understand what they were trying to do, but it came out very wrong. I'm sorry, I love Nancy Pelosi and you know what they trying to do for our country, but get on that one knee and the, that Kente Klaus stole um, I think that we have been fighting for, we've been fighting for things for years and years and years, and no offense to any other race or ethnicity, but if when something happened to them, there's a bill, a legislation getting in front of Congress of let's stop X, Y, Z, or let's do whatever. But for us as black people, we get overlooked. Um, if you want to know how I really feel about the politics about African American in this country, please just call to me offline. Come find Jarek in the cab office, which is going to be room 103. 103. And you guys can find me in Esperanza Hall working at the desk or in room 409B. Uh, you can find me in cab uh, office 103 in the cab office. Um, but to, to, 
continue with the the thoughts of the political issues affecting African Americans in this country, and you know what can leaders do on campus to help um, make the campus more inclusive? I will say, after the murder of George Floyd, I saw our campus trying to embrace the black and African American culture a lot more. I saw administration asking questions, trying to learn how can we be there to support you. Um, yes, as we where we are now, it was very rocky to, to get to that point, especially as a black man. Um, I was getting questions, what are we doing for the students? How are the students feeling? Things of that nature. When you have once, you have not at once asked me how I'm feeling as a black man who walk in the same shoes as DeMarcus, who walk in the same shoes as George Floyd. Patrice, as a black female, there's things that you would not know what a black female go through without talking and really understanding a black female. And shout out to um, Dr. Micah Brocher for putting on a wonderful documentary um, for this Black History Month called Push Out the Criminalization of Our Black Females and how about um, what they go through in the K through 12 system. Uh, but I think our campus is doing a lot to move to needle. Yes, is there more that we can do? Not only for the black culture, but for all cultures, yes. But it's, it starts with somebody trying to be that ally. I want to shout out um, former president, BSU president, Xavier Watson. I want to shout out our former university president, Dr. Cynthia Matson, um, and uh, my director, Dr. Joseph Pickering, who really worked with um, Xavier on getting his proposal to the um, Arts and Ground and Aesthetics Committee to propose a Black Lives Matter sidewalk on this campus. There is not a it's not a lot of universities where you will go on that campus to see a Black Lives Matter sidewalk. You will not see a lot of campuses with a rainbow bridge. You will not see somebody on a campus that have another bridge with it's a flag that represents all identities. So our campus is trying to move the needle, is trying to figure out how we can be more inclusive to all communities and all heritage. Yes, is there still more that we need to do? Of course, we always need more. Um, we also have to understand that we are a Hispanic service institution, so majority of the things that we do is to spotlight our Hispanic students, just like if we went to a HBCU, at my experience at Prairie View, it's completely black, 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 but that's what that campus is about. It's about, it's a historical black college and university to uplift our black American students at HSI. It's here to help support the Hispanic and Latino community, but as we are supporting supporting those communities, um, make sure that we are exposing them to other heritage, um, as well as not just Mexican-American history, but you are Dominican, correct? Which can fall under National Hispanic Heritage Month. So how are we taking the National Hispanic Heritage Month or Latinx Month and embracing somebody like DeMarcus who identify as Dominican, who can fall into that, that special community, or his black card and his black identity. How can you make that more reliable, not reliable, more inclusive to what we do on campus? Um, and if the focus is to also always uplift the Hispanic culture, let's talk about the Afro-Latinos. That can always be a conversation to bring in the black culture, the Hispanic culture, and see what we're doing together, but also expose them to the separate heritage as well. I'm going to get off the soapbox because I can talk about this all day. So. <laughs> that was good. That was good. What about you, Prez? Um, so, restating the question, what are your thoughts on current political issues affecting African Americans in this country? Um, I'm not too much of a political person. I truly try to stay away from that because things could get touchy. But um, as you know, a lot of things go on social media. And like you said, um, seeing things like falling 
black idols, like for example, George Floyd, seeing that uh, really affected me in a way just because I have a different mindset in terms of police officers, I guess you could say, because I, I don't know what's going to happen when I get pulled over or, or I get stopped or anything, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's just that constant fear of what's going to happen and you don't know what's going to happen because you don't know what that officer background is or how he was raised and stuff of that nature, how his mindset is. And I have, I have one of my homies is a police officer. And I mean, I already told him that I don't like that at all, period. But he's my friend and I respect him. But he also says there's people in the forest that is that type of, uh, what's the word, narrative. And I'm just, I'm disgusted in a way. So that, that thought, and, it, and I feel like it's still happening, honestly. N nowadays it's still happening and I'm still living in constant fear for that situation. Definitely, That's mine. and I actually, um, I, my dad used to be a police officer, and during the time where a lot of police precincts were being exposed for their heinous crimes or their obvious biases, mm -hmm. um, my dad really took heed to that, and he did end up resigning from the police force because he didn't want that that narrative following him for one or something happen something happening and that narrative or uh the narrative that people have of police officers in general regardless if they're a good person if something happens and he's put into that box mm -hmm. and so while it is difficult for us and we are in constant fear they are as well mm -hmm. but um so question um since we're, I guess, kind of sort of on that topic, um, what do you think can possibly, like, change that? Because I know during leadership, uh, that was a topic I put up, and I kind of sort of made a plan for it, but I want to see y'all's view on, like, how can we change, like, the system in terms of bringing people that are not trying to do that type of situation to other people like us and then other uh, what's the word, heritage, like Hispanic and stuff of that nature. Because I know friends of mine still, even though they're not even black, they're still dealing with the situation so that because they're Hispanic. So mm. I think as a minority, we all have things that we go through. Um, I think there's some things that relate, that can cross over set, overlap, but I don't think what, some things that, I, for example, being black, mm -hmm being in this country we don't have the issue of somebody that used to have a lot of power trying to say let's stop them from coming into the country mm -hmm. i think for me um when, all, when that was happening let's build a wall san antonio have a wall where do san antonio have a wall at i'm still trying to figure that out but for me <laughs> that I'm not gonna say that I didn't think that was important, but it didn't hit home to me that, that it was somebody that that was actually targeted to. Exactly. I think for George Floyd, it hit home for us because that's our culture, that's our heritage. I think it really takes um, to to bring that inclusivity and to make people feel more included and having those tough conversations and understand that we might not go through the same thing, but we all go through something. And how can we be there to support them? Mm -hmm. how, how can you, as a black man, as a Dominican man, be there for your Hispanic brothers? How can you, as a black female, be there for your Asian sisters? Like, have those tough conversations. If you are uncomfortable having a conversation to talk about tough subjects like this, then that's great. These conversations are not meant for to be comfortable. You have to understand everybody have biasness. Mm -hmm. Everybody have biasness. You might not think you do. 
and it might be something so small as, oh, he wear glasses, I don't want to talk to him. That's still a bias. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to be able to have tough conversations. I know for me, being on this campus, I am very glad to have Dr. Pickery and Christina Dominguez behind my back. When George Floyd died, was murdered, I can say died, when he was murdered, they asked me probably multiple times, they asked me, not administration, but they asked me multiple times, how, how are you feeling? What can we do for you? And it was one point I was like, can you please stop asking me that question? I know that y'all asking after the kindness of your heart, but don't ask what can you do for me. Ask as a Hispanic woman, as a white male, what can I do to learn to help make sure that this does never happen again? And I'm grateful because they are always there to learn, to hear my insight, to untweet, embrace everybody from Christina background to Dr. Pickering background to my background. Um, we really, we have built something in our office that I, that's why I love coming to work. It's, it's because it's not work. I'm working with friends. I'm working with people who want to see you succeed. I'm working with people that you guys, so I can help mold and be better than me. That's my goal, for you can go leave this place and be better than me. And y'all already doing good. I mean, some people, you know, got a little bit more work, but you know, I'm just playing the That's market. crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think that's all it is. It's to have these tough conversations and don't be scared to be uncomfortable. Don't be scared because when you're uncomfortable, that means you are growing. You are never growing, and that's in these type of conversations. That's is in your job, your workforce. You are never going to be comfortable. If you are comfortable, I'm sorry. If you are comfortable, you are never growing. You have to grow. Growing pains, keyword, growing pain. It's some type of pain. You're going to have to realize, like, ooh, I didn't know I was that way. Ooh, Definitely. but it's okay. It's a form of a betterment. It's a form of betterment. You Just, have to learn how to operate in chaos. That's what a good friend of mine told me. Operate in chaos. It's kind of go with it, but it kind of don't go with it. But this is one saying that I tell everybody. In your life, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to, you know, things are going to be so great. Like Barack Obama, 2008. First black president. Then 2020, we back down. We back down. Murder of George Floyd. But you have your ups and downs. But look at it like this. When you're in the hospital, when that machine is going up and down, that means you are alive. When that machine is a flat line, that means you're dead. Mm. And I'm gonna mm. leave it at that. Lord Jesus. <laughs> and with that being said, <laughs> wow. That was kinda deep. Wow, that was Jesus. very deep. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you. Peace out. Peace. See y'all.